In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to move between different open workbooks so that we can select the worksheets and the cells contained in them. I've already downloaded and extracted the files needed for this session, and there are four files in total. The one that we're going to use to begin with and the one that will contain our code is called Q1 Total. If I double click to open this workbook up in Excel, this one is going to contain a list of the total sales from the January, February and March workbooks, which are the other three workbooks that we have downloaded and extracted. Let's start by opening the VB Editor and creating a new module in this first project. So I'm going to open up the VB Editor, make sure it fills up the full screen and then right click Insert Module. What I'm then going to do is switch back to the desktop and one simple way to do that is to hold down the Windows key and press D on the keyboard. And then I'm going to highlight all of the other three workbooks and then press the Enter key to open them all up. I can see that those three separate workbooks have all opened up in separate windows and that their projects have also appeared in the Project Explorer in the Visual Basic Editor. Let's just tidy this up a little bit by first of all um, first of all, collapsing the project so that all I can see is the module that I've inserted into Q1 total. The first subroutine I would like to write is going to copy the total sales from the January sales workbook into the appropriate place in the Q1 total workbook. So just to demonstrate where we need to go to make that work, if I have a look and find the January sales workbook, I can then maximize this so it fills up the full screen. And we can see that the workbook contains five worksheets in total. The one I'm interested in is the total worksheet, and in particular cell B7 on that sheet. That's the cell that I want to copy. What I would then like to do is find the appropriate place in the Q1 total workbook, and that's going to be cell B3 in the only worksheet that exists in that workbook. So to do that, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor again, and let's create, I'll just tidy up the Project Explorer again, collapse that project, and what I can then do is create a new subroutine called Copy Jan Sales. The first instruction I'm going to write in this subroutine is going to move into the January sales workbook. We can't guarantee that that's the one that will be selected when we run the subroutine, so let's make sure that it is the case by writing the instruction. We'll begin by referring to the workbooks property, which allows me to reference any open workbook. I can then open up some parentheses and some double quotes, and then enter the name of the workbook that I want to reference. So in this case, it's jansales.xlsx. You can see the name of the workbook in parentheses after the appropriate project in the Project Explorer. So this one's going to be called jansales.xlsx. What I then want to do is apply the activate method to move to that workbook. Following that, I can reference the appropriate worksheet, which is going to be called totals. So I can then say worksheets, refer to the worksheets property, as we've done previously. And the worksheet name is called total, sorry, not totals, total. And then I want to apply the select method to that. As we saw, the cell that I want to copy is cell B7. So I can use the range property to refer to range B7 and select that cell. Finally, I'm going to apply the copy method to the active cell. So I can say active cell dot copy. Having copied the value from the correct place, I now need to return to the Q1 total workbook, select the appropriate cell in the total worksheet, and then paste the value that I've copied. So again, to do that, I can refer to the workbooks property, and in some parentheses and double quotes, refer to the name of the workbook that I want to return to. So that's going to be Q1 total dot XLSM this time close the parentheses and double quotes, and then apply the activate method to that workbook. As this workbook only contains a single worksheet called total, I don't need to select that one. Good practice, in case you're going to insert new worksheets into the workbook later on, it might be a good, good practice to actively select the total worksheet. But in this case, I'm going to avoid doing that just for convenience. I'm going to jump straight to the cell. So I'm going to say range b3.select. And then finally, I'm going to say active cell dot paste special. And I only want to paste the values of the cell that I've copied. So I'll apply the Excel paste values content. So I'll, I'll pass that value to the paste parameter of the paste special method. At that point, I can give this subroutine a quick test to make sure that it all works. And it might be worthwhile just watching what happens on screen as well. So I'm going to change the width of my screen so that I can see both the VB editor and Excel in the background. And if I click into the subroutine, I'll press F8 to begin stepping through. So the first thing that should happen, the first thing you should notice is that I move from the total worksheet, to, sorry, total workbook into the Jan sales workbook. 
Then, assuming that I wasn't already on the total worksheet, as it happens I already am, this statement would select that worksheet, and cell B7 would then become selected, then that cell becomes copied. I then switch back to the Q1 total workbook, select cell B3, and finally paste the value into the selected cell. Make sure I press F8 again to end the subroutine, and that's that first procedure created. Now let's create a subroutine that will let us copy the February sales, and in doing so we'll look at another technique for referencing the workbook in which your code is stored. So we'll have a new subroutine called, as you probably guessed, copy feb sales. We could have just copied and pasted this and then edited the code. And in fact, what I'm going to do to begin with is copy the first four instructions from our existing subroutine, and then paste that into the new subroutine, and then I can simply change the name of the workbook that I'm referencing from Jan sales to Feb sales. In the previous subroutine, we then referred to the quarter one total workbook in the same way we referred to the Jan sales and Feb sales workbook, using the workbook's property and then entering the full name of that workbook. That's quite awkward to type in, and one other major downside of this is that if we save the Q1 total workbook with a different name, this code will no longer work. So instead of using workbook's Q1 total, what we'll do instead is use the this workbook property. We've seen this in, a, in an earlier module in this course, but if I look for the this workbook property, this is a quick, simple reference to the workbook in which this module is stored. So if I say this workbook.activate, it now lo no longer matters what the workbook itself is called, it will always select the workbook or beg your pardon, activate the workbook in which this module is stored. From there, I can simply select the correct cell and then paste the values into the correct cell. So rather than write those out again from scratch, let's just cheat, copy and paste these two lines from my original subroutine, paste them in, and then modify the cell reference so that we refer to cell B4 instead. Again, just worthwhile having a very quick test of this. I'll step through it so we can see that everything is working as intended. So if I click into the subroutine, use the F8 key to step through, we'll go to the February workbook which you can hopefully just see in the background there, February sales, there it is. We're already on the total worksheet, so the next line is kind of redundant, but it's good practice to have it in there anyway. B, range B7 is selected and then copied. We return to this workbook, which is Q1 total, select the appropriate cell, and then paste the values into that position. One thing it would be nice to do for this particular project is create a more elegant way to repeat the code that selects and copies the total from each separate month. So what we'll do is create a new subroutine called select and copy total. So let's just maximize the VB editor and create a new subroutine called select and copy total. What I'm then going to do is copy a section of three lines of code from either of the two existing subroutines. So the three lines I'm interested in are the ones that select the total worksheet, and then B7, and then copy that cell. So let's copy and paste that code into this new subroutine. What I then want to do is replace those three lines in my previous subroutines with a call to the select and copy total subroutine. So I'm going to select the three lines that I've just copied, delete those, and then press control and space and look for the select and copy total subroutine or method. I can do the same thing in my copy Jan sales subroutine, so identify the three lines of code and then replace those with a call to the select and copy total procedure. Now at this point, the copy Jan sales and copy Feb sales procedures still do the same jobs individually that they did previously. What might also be nice would be to have a single subroutine that we could call on that will generate all of the quarter one sales. So let's create another new subroutine. It doesn't really matter where we do this. I'm going to place this one right at the very top of my module. So I'm going to give myself a couple of blank lines and then create a new subroutine called create Q1 totals. So sub create Q1 totals. All I then need to do is call the copy Jan sales procedure, so I can look in the IntelliSense for copy Jan sales, and then the same thing to copy Feb sales. So now what I can do is run this single subroutine, and both the January sales and the February sales will be, will be copied. It's worthwhile just quickly testing this. I can use the F8 key to begin stepping through, just to make sure that I'm calling the correct procedures, and I'll see my code jumping around to different places and returning to the original procedures, 
and then when this one has finished we should end up back with the copy feb sales if i get bored at any point i can just press f5 to run the entire thing all the way through to the end and i'll find that i've got my total sales in the same positions they were previously so at this point you could either move down to the extra practice session on this page which asks you to fill in the procedure that will copy the march total sales into the appropriate place alternatively you could move on to the next part of this lesson which explains how you can avoid selecting different workbooks and worksheets by changing the way you reference cells